Hey guys, alright, I hope uh, all the subscribers are doing okay and, and everyone's uh, enjoying the channel. For those who don't know, I do a bit of a martial arts channel uh, covering Japanese and Chinese traditional training methods. A um, number of people have asked me about the swords on the back here, uh, so I've never done a, any sort of review, but I've had this one sword, which is the Paul Chen, the Hanway uh, Practical Katana Plus, uh, which I got God, more than five years ago now, probably longer than that. So I thought I'd just do a review on it for you guys. Uh, there's probably loads of reviews, but uh, I just thought, you know, I'd give my opinion. Try and do it as quick as possible. Okay, so, and then I'll tell you the main thing that annoys me about this sword. Okay, so here's the sword. Try and hold it up to the camera, so the camera will focus on it. So there's the handle. Okay, we'll start with the handle. Yeah, because that's the first bit of the sword. So you've got a nice pommel there. Uh, the fixtures and fittings on the sword are nice, and they they sort of they try to make them look very authentic. Yeah, so we've got the steel pommel here with which which is like antique defect brass fittings. There's the brass hilt ornaments here, which are which are little dragons or something like that, lions. Very traditional. Those little tsuka tsuka decorations, the handle decorations. Um, the, the, underneath, very traditional, the same, the ray skin, uh, that's very traditional, it's, it's real ray skin as well. Um, it's let down a bit by the fact that this leather wrap that they have on it, it I'm pretty certain is leather effect, uh, and with very little use, because I, I don't use this one much, I keep it as a display sword, um, with very little use, it's already starting has started to wear away up at the top here. So with extended use, like I did with my Practical Katana Plus, uh, my old Practical Katana, it would just wear to nothing. So that goes to show, guys, that cotton, the good old-fashioned cotton, which was the traditional and most original uh, sword uh, coverage other than leather, is the best way to go. Cotton just seems to last forever. Um, and then again, the, the, the Tsuba is this like sunburst design, very nice antique defect, um, uh, which, which looks good. Um, it's double pegged to the handle with two pegs, one up here and one down here, uh, which are put in on opposing sides, of course. And it's a full tang construction, well, near enough full tang. The tang on this sword will probably run to somewhere about here where not far from the end of the last peg, which is, sorry, down here somewhere, yeah? So you've got about this much emptiness. Okay, now, just quickly, uh, I think what ruins this sword is this handle, okay? The handle's very rectangular and it has no shape to it. In other words, it's just as fat here as it is here, and that's not very traditional at all. Yeah, I've got a very cheaper sword up here, which you can probably see the way the handle goes fat, then thin, then fat at the end. That's the more traditional way, uh, because it just looks nicer, it's more, more ergonomic, it's better for you to hold, you could hardly say that there. It just feels nicer and it looks more authentic. You can see this sword in the background looks a lot more authentic than this thing with, with, with this giant handle, yeah? Which sort of matrix style handle that it's got going on, yeah? Because at the end of the day, what does the work on the sword is the blade, yeah? The weight and everything, the blade is what does the work. So you can't, you know, handle's meant to balance the blade, but you don't want a blade that doesn't weigh a lot either. Now that's also what this sword feels like, but I'll get on to that in a minute. Um, so that's the main pet peeve I had. I did do a practice review of this, but I just it just went on for too long. So I'm trying to do like a quicker one for you guys. But yeah, the handle is just got no shape to it. And I think that ruins the authenticity and the look of it. It makes it look like a Ferrari with a pickup truck stuck on the end. Yeah. Now the reason for this handle being like this, although visually it looks very nice, when, you, when you've got it in person, it is just, just not fully authentic looking. Uh, the reason for this is obviously, I think Hanway and them cite that it's the fact that it's meant to be a bit of an upgrade on the practical katana with obviously a thick wooden handle to, 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 to take the rigors of cutting practice. 
yeah so that's why it's thick and like that but you know if you're cutting with something that's not looking and not feeling authentic then you're not getting the full the, the experience then what's the point in doing the cutting uh, do you get what I mean you know as in the test cutting yeah um, okay anyway the the, 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 the collar here I think it's the habaki I think uh, I can't forgotten but the collar here is brass the fittings are brass they're not copper so they're stronger once again to withstand cutting the blade is like Swedish power uh, pounded steel high Rockwell scale steel high purity it's forged as in it's forged into shape uh, and it's edge tempered um, but it's not folded steel it's not Damascus steel this is just forged and edge tempered so edge tempering is when they will forge it they will then put the clay along the edge they will fire the blade uh, quench it in water and the front end will be harder than the back yeah so it makes Pretty much for the money, it's cost me 300 UK pounds. For the money, you're getting a very, very close, as close as we could probably get to a very nice authentic blade, yeah, um, without it being folded. But folding was to get rid of impurities, um, as far as my understanding goes. Um, so if the steel's already pure, you don't need to fold it. So, but but then again, for the price you're paying, you're sacrificing authenticity on this, aren't you? With the handle and everything like that. Um, so that's pretty much what I would say. Oh, the sheath is just a plain black sheath with the there's like cord wrapping around it that you can use to tie it to your belt. That's not cotton. That's just a plastic synthetic fiber, um, which again isn't very nice, it isn't very authentic, but for the price. Uh, the problem with the sheath I found on my sheath for the sword is even though I looked after the sword, my the, the sheath on my one um, caused the blade to rust, so I had to throw it away, basically. Uh, I don't know why, I'd, I'd oil the blade, I'd do everything like that. It's changes in temperature or whatever, I think oils and stuff were coming out of the blade, uh, salts come out because salts are in resin in wood and they're attacking the blade so possibly they chose the wrong wood to make it, make it out of or whatever but it was causing the blade to rust which wasn't good so the sheath yeah, I, I literally had to throw away I've got other swords and they were stored in the same conditions and they were fine uh, so I don't know what's going on with that the ham on temper line on this sword uh, I don't know if you can see it you can just about see it it's wavy can you see it there like the nice waves uh, when the blade is new, it's very, very nice on this sword, and it is a genuine Hamon temper line, i.e. I, because this sword's actually been sanded down and rubbed down, hence why it's not as shiny because of the rust. Uh, the Hamon line is still there because it goes throughout the structure of the steel, so it's real. Um, the feel of the blade, like I said, it feels like it travels very well, uh, you know, in all, in all the things that it does. Um, but it's a bit, it, it's a little bit too light, I would have thought. It doesn't actually feel, it. most of the weight is, feels like it's here. It doesn't actually feel like it's got much, um, much weight in the sword. Uh, but that's probably because of how long the handle is. Um, so so it's, it's up to you whether your preference is to have a really light blade. But to me, it feels like you're holding a handle with no sword on it. Uh, rather than a sword with a handle where the weight is used to wield it, uh, used to cause the damage and stuff like that. So, but it does make for a very fast moving blade. Um, but once again, I cite the handle uh, as the main reason why if I was to be given the opportunity, you see, I was kind of tempted, I was seduced by the blade. If I was to be given the opportunity to get this sword again, I wouldn't get it because of the handle, because it's just a square cube. It's just like a a rectangular block um, and it just just doesn't just doesn't fit right in the hand it just doesn't feel right uh, like I said I cite the taper on this one above me which is a lot cheaper sword but anyway 300 UK pounds I uh, just wanted to do an honest review on this sword um, and a quicker review than my last review I don't think I've forgotten anything um, so it's up to you guys there's a quick slow-mo of the sword Yeah, nice fixtures and fittings. 
If your handle's going to wear away, if this wrapping's going to wear away quickly, it's useless. If you're someone who trains with something every day, it's, it's just it's going to it's going to fail on you. And finally, the cutting edge is a small cutting edge. Yeah, this is the cutting edge from about here to here. Uh, you can these can some sometimes be longer, so it's a small cutting edge. Anyway, guys, that's my review on the sword. Uh, I hope it's of some help to you. I'm no sword sword guru, but uh, you know that's my review on this uh, Porchin Hanway Practical Katana Plus. Thanks a lot.